Hello everyone, my name is Light and welcome back to the lab. For today's experiment, we are going to build a drip leaf farm. All right, let's get right into it. So the first question is, is how do we obtain drip leaf? Well, currently in Minecraft 117, the only way is by trading with the wandering trader. All right. So that being said, I would definitely suggest having some emeralds on you at all times because you never know where and when that pesky fella is going to show up. All right. Now, once we get our hands on some of the small drip leaf, what can we do with it? Well, with the small stuff, not much. We can only really plant it and then use some bone meal on it to grow it so we can get the large drip leaf, which offer us more options. So to plant a small drip leaf, there is currently only two blocks we can use for this. That is the two I have here. So this is the new moss block and this is clay. In order to get clay, you know, you can go to any river, ocean, swamp, wherever you want, get yourself all the clay you need. Or if you're looking for the moss blocks, you can get these in a shipwreck or also from the wandering trader. All right. Now, once we have one, we can go ahead, we can plant it like this. And like I say, at this point, there's not really much we can do with it. We can't jump on it because we'll just fall right through. So go ahead, grab yourself a piece of bone meal and give it a hit just like that. Now you'll notice the moment I bone mealed it, the plant changed into a large drip leaf. And the amount that it grew is two. This amount does seem to vary. I've seen them go as high as four or five blocks off one piece of bone meal. Now, I'm not saying that happens every time. It might be something just restricted to the first time, but the first time does seem to vary. Now, when you have it at the height you need, you can actually go ahead and break the stalk and it will take down the entire plant. Kind of like scaffolding, bamboo, that uh, sort of thing. Now, you'll notice though, when you take it down, you actually get the big drip leaf. All right. Now, once we have the big drip leaf, our options for planting become a little more wide open. You can actually plant these things on almost any block. So if I plant one here, looks like that. Now, what can you do with these? Well, from what I can tell, these blocks are gonna have three main uses. The one, uh, number one, of course, is gonna be parkour. Number two, I can see being traps. And number three, of course, decorative. Definitely, definitely decorative. A lot of, most people will probably use it for decorative purposes. However, like I say, I can see a lot of parkour maps incorporating this. So how it works, if you go ahead, if you jump on it, but if you wait too long, the top of the plant will tilt down and you'll fall through. Now, after a time, the plant will tilt back up, allowing you to go again. Now, of course, when you're planting these, you can stack them up. So if you wanted to say, make a makeshift set of stairs, say something like this, you absolutely could. Now, the next question is, is can I make it up this before they tilt down? So let's go ahead and give it a try. You are gonna have to be quick. All right, so I did make it. And again, as we saw, because I waited too long, the plant tilted down and I fell through. All right, so very cool, very cool plants indeed. I could definitely see a lot of cool maps coming with these things. And, uh, you know, if you have friends that really like them, I'd be weary, folks. I'd be a little weary. All right. So now that we've seen the drip leaf and we know what it does, the next question is, is how do we farm these things? All right, folks. Well, allow me a minute to get the materials I need in my inventory and we'll get started. Hang on. I'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. I have all the parts I need and we can begin. All right. So for this build, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to build the redstone mechanism that drives this farm. Now you might be thinking this farm is pretty tall. Well, I assure you that there is a reason for that and we will discuss it once we get into how the farm actually works. All right. Now in order to build the redstone mechanism, come to any clear area where you're going to make your build. First things first, dig down by two blocks. And then we're going to dig out this block here and as well this block right here. Next, grab a hopper. We're going to point that hopper into the back of this dirt block right here, just like that. On top of that hopper, you can put either a clay or a moss block, whichever you have really doesn't matter. Excellent. Okay, so next, we actually need something right here, so I apologize for that. Next, grab a couple rails. We're going to put one like this, one like that. Next, grab yourself a hopper minecart, put it on the rails, give it a push. Now you'll notice the moment we did that, the hopper minecart went inside the clay block, 
That's exactly what we're looking for. Once it's in, go ahead, break all this stuff, get it out of your way. In this space right here, we are going to put an upside down stair. So grab any stair that you like, go ahead, put it in just like that. Break the block underneath the stair. And that's where the chest is going to go, just like that. And in this space right here, we're actually going to put a trap door so we don't fall in. And this way we can still get access to the chest whenever we need it. Just like that. Perfect. All right. Now behind the clay block, that's where we're going to put our dispenser. That's going to go like that, making sure that the face is pointing in. On this block here, this is where we're going to want our piston. So grab a regular piston. That's going to go like that, making sure that the face is pointing in because that's what's going to break the drip leaf for us. Coming out of this side of the dispenser, we are going to want a comparator. This is going to be the start of our power line for the clock. So the comparator is going to go like this. We're going to have that go into a block. So grab your building blocks. Block's going to go like that. And that's going to allow this signal to turn the corner, essentially. Coming out of that building block, for now, just put a, pieces, a couple pieces of redstone dust, just like that. Perfect. All right, so now next, we're going to build the clock that actually drives the dispenser. For this job, we're going to use a comparator clock because it is very fast and uh, will be perfect for what our needs are on this particular job. Now, in order to build the clock, come up to the back of the dispenser like this. Go back by three blocks. So one, two, three. Move to the left by one block. And on this block right here, we're actually going to put a comparator like that. Next, grab your redstone dust. We're going to put a piece here, piece here, and a piece there. So we have a square that looks like this. Then we're going to have a piece here that goes in to the dispenser. And this is actually the entire clock. Now there is one more step on the comparator. We have to click this little knob here so it's red. And that's actually what turns the clock on and makes it go super quick. Now, in order to power this or to turn it on and off, we are going to use a redstone block that'll be uh, powered by a piston. So in order to help us place it, put a building block just like that. Next, grab your redstone block. That's going to go on top of the building block. On top of the redstone block, put another, or put another couple building blocks like that. Go ahead, break this one. We're going to use this one up here to place our other piston. Now this piston will need to be a sticky piston, so make sure you have one of those on hand. Put that in just like that, making sure the face is pointing down. Once those are in place, you can break this. Ooh. Not the piston. <laughs> don't break the piston, no matter what you do. Don't break the piston. So again, folks, sticky piston, just like that. And then go ahead, break that. Perfect. Now that we have this in place, we can actually finish running our power. So to do that, put another piece of redstone dust here, block here, a couple blocks here like that, break this one, and then another block like that. And then finally, three more pieces of redstone dust, just like that. So what's gonna happen, the moment we put some bone meal in this dispenser, this comparator is going to detect the contents, it's gonna power this block, which is gonna send the signal along to this piston. The piston's gonna push the redstone block down, turning on the clock, actually powering the dispenser, allowing our drip leaf to grow. Perfect. All right. Now, there is one piece missing from this, and that is the signal that comes down from the top in order to power this piston. So I'm actually not going to build that because as you can see, depending on how high you want to go, there is a lot of work required, but it is quite easy. So let's go ahead. We'll take a look up at the top of this build here, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so up here, folks, we have our observer. What happens is the small drip leaf will grow all the way up to this point. The observer will see it when it gets here. It'll power this block. And then from there, the signal goes down. Now you'll notice that we have this in sections with pistons and redstone blocks along the way. And that is because we can only send the signal down so far before it dies. So if you're gonna go with this style, the amount of glass blocks in each section is 13. So again, each of these big sections is 13 glass blocks. Once you get to block 13, which is this one here, you're gonna to wanna to put a piston, and this is a sticky piston. 
redstone dust on top of the piston and then your redstone block on the bottom. So that way when the signal comes down, it'll power this piston, pushing down the redstone block, hitting it right here, sending the signal down even further. And every piece on the way down is 13 pieces of glass, piston, redstone block. 13 pieces of glass, piston, redstone block. The only time it's different is when we get down here to the bottom, when we don't need the full 13 pieces. So once you get to the bottom, you know, put in however many pieces you need to get your signal to this point. Make sure when you're bringing it across, it's at this level. Otherwise, you'll interfere with the redstone dust down here. And then once you get here, you can just simply run it down into the piston. And then once the signal finally makes it all the way, it will power this piston, breaking the drip leaf at this point, causing it all to fall. And then when it hits the bottom, it'll all be collected by the hopper minecart that we put inside the clay block. All right. Now enough talking, let's just show you this thing in action. So allow me a moment, we'll grab some bone meal, we'll put that in the dispenser. And as well, we are gonna need at least one drip leaf to plant to start us off. So give me a moment, I'll grab that. Okay, perfect. So if you want an access to be able to plant your drip leaf, I would recommend doing something like this. Just put a trap door in the space that's right in front of your clay block. Open it up, put your drip stone or put your drip leaf in like that. Make sure you close the trap door. And then finally, go ahead, put your bone meal inside the dispenser. Now, once we do this, you can see the clock immediately started. And if I go around front, we can see everything growing all the way to the top. Doesn't take very long. So if you're looking to harvest a lot of this stuff, this is definitely the way to go. And as we can see, once it got to the top, that got seen by the observer. The observer sent the signal all the way down, breaking the drip leaf. Now you'll notice that our piston fired twice. That will happen every time. So make sure you wait until it fires that second time before you plant your next one. All right. So again, though, if you are looking to get a lot of this stuff, this is definitely the way to go right here. However, you don't necessarily have to go this tall. You could say go eight, 16, 32, you know, the height's really up to you. Once you find a height you like, then you can even start spreading it across. So you can, you know, make it more of an industrial size farm. Now, as for the power and sending the signal down, we do have a couple options. You could do what I'm doing here and use, you know, your standard glass stairs going all the way down. Or you could use an alternate technique, which is walls. If you use walls, you will not need to use the uh, the pistons and the redstone blocks because they would not be required for this method. So a lot of people don't know, but when we attach a block to a wall, like say we have a, a wall that's three pieces like this, when we attach the block to the middle section, there is a state change that happens. The walls going all the way down here in the middle will get a small bump on them. And when they get down here to the last one, the observer can actually see that change. So. That being said, we could literally send a signal, you know, for as long as we could build the walls. So if you build your walls all the way to build height, you could send a signal down all the way from build height. As long as it got to the observer down here, whatever you had hooked up would happen. So let me show you that in action. In order to do so, I just need to put a block in front of this observer. And as we can see, the piston down there fires because of the state change in this wall. So let me uh, break the block and you'll see that again. See the thing go all the way down the wall. So that's a neat trick. In case nobody knew that, you can use this as an alternate signal sending method going down. The one thing to note though, is you are gonna need a space between this wall and this wall here. So this here block can make the connection and send it all the way down. All right, all right. Now, if anybody's going to be building this farm in their world and you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to reach out in the comments below. I am more than willing to help anyone willing to give my tutorials a try. But on that note, that is all I have time for today. Once again, my name is Light and thanks for stopping by.